my background is I, I started my career in the oil industry for 10 years and then spent 20 years as a stockbroker and then in the wealth management sector before joining Witten 10 years ago. I'm chief executive here, which means that I'm responsible for delivering on the company's strategy and giving the returns which shareholders hope for. We're an equity fund, so our prime objective is to deliver a total return which exceeds the global benchmark that we publish and which also delivers real dividend growth, which, which we've done for the last 45 years, although we can't responsibly promise that every year. We changed our benchmark to be 15% UK from 30 and the other 85% uh, to be in a global equity index, which also includes a little bit in the UK. So we'd simplified the global bit and reduced the UK weighting. That's part of a medium term trend, which is driven by the fact that parts of the world which weren't really investable 10 or 20 years ago have become more investable. The opportunities have increased in non-UK markets. And the UK market has become increasingly dominated by uh, relatively low growth sectors, or in some cases, uh, sectors which are threatened by, with obsolescence by climate change factors. And so the, the, we've tried to shift our benchmark in the direction of where the opportunities are. We've had Linzel train as a manager since 2010 and they delivered uh, outstanding results to our shareholders over that period, almost double the returns on their UK market benchmark. And uh, they also have a similarly successful record in global equities uh, where, with a very similar investment approach. And so it was a natural switch for us to make as we were increasing the global content of our portfolio to uh, move them across from being a UK specialist to a global specialist. I think we're going to have an interesting time, uh, but, but that probably beats the paralysis that we've had for the last few years. I mean, I didn't personally vote for uh, us to leave, but I think as a country, particularly with a, a, a government with a relatively strong majority, we'll be able to make a go of it. And, and after two or three years of uh, political toing and froing and the associated risk of uh, business hostile government coming in, I think the prospect of a bit of political stability, even a la Boris Johnson, I think is going to be quite interesting and, and positive for UK equities, which are still sitting with a great big risk premium that built up since 2016. Well, primarily, the coronavirus is obviously a human tragedy and, and uh, like previous things such as the Ebola epidemic and SARS 15, 20 years ago, uh, the markets, no, nobody really can predict how long it's going to take to bring it under control. And undoubtedly, for the first few months of the year, it will have a big impact because China's more or less shut down for, for, for a couple of months and a lot of the world uses Chinese uh, you know, manufacturing as part of its uh, supply network. Um, the other thing that it did was it catalyzed a correction in equity markets during January. Uh, we, we had a very strong rise in equities in 2019. Earnings hadn't really done much on the back of it and I think people were perhaps looking for excuses to take profits uh, and given that the, the stocks which had been running well at the end of last year were more cyclically exposed and suddenly that cyclical recovery hope has been, if you like, put in a holding pen, which is why we've seen cyclicals take a complete back seat and the markets rotated back to the sort of the, 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 the comfort stocks of the, the quality growth stocks and technology. Uh, I think that leadership will change again during the year, but we'll, we'll need to see how big the economic impact has been. I'm relatively positive on the outlook for equity markets. Um, it depends very much on what happens to economic growth. And in the, in the very short term, the news is probably going to be disappointing relating to uh, the coronavirus and the disruption to supply chains from that. But although equity markets do look quite highly rated compared to their historical average, 
We're also looking at interest rates, which are pinned to the floor, and in fact, in January, took a turn lower. And uh, the, so I think the, the low level of interest rates is going to continue to uh, sustain high valuations in the market. And perhaps more important, a lot of governments are increasing, uh, pl uh, uh, announcing plans to increase government spending, cut taxes, and I think that's going to help put a bit of lead in the pencil of economic growth after a, a slightly shabby uh, period over the last 18 months.